Today we're going to be talking about rating of perceived exertion. This is a scale that you can use to self-assess how difficult your exercise or activity is. This is important because you need to understand how difficult, you know, how much you're pushing yourself in your activity because if you don't push yourself hard enough, then you won't become stronger. But if you push yourself too hard, then you put yourself at risk of injury. So knowing and being able to self-assess the difficulty of your exercise is a critical skill for anybody who wants to be physically active. So I'll teach you what this is and how to use it in today's episode. Real quick, my name is Anthony Davis. This is Shape Shift Wellness, the channel that uses evidence, research, logic, and reason to explore all things activity and movement. If you like that, subscribe to my channel and be sure to give this video a like. All right, now let's learn about RPE in today's episode. Okay, let's start off by just uh, citing sources. So if here's an article, it's a great summary of not just RPE, but also RIR, which will be the subject of my next video. So this is a good overview of how to assess the difficulty of your activity using many different methods because there are many different ways to do this, okay? RPE is just one of them. Now the importance of RPE or any other system of rating your difficulty is simply for you to gauge how intense your activity is so that you can create an adaptation. So here we have a picture of a tree with its roots going down into the earth because if a tree encounters wind that stresses the tree, then the roots are forced to grow deep into the earth and strengthen that tree. Whereas if it does not have stress, it will not grow as strong. The human body is the same way. We need some stress to become strong, but too much and we break. So you need to be able to gauge your activity. RPE, rating of perceived exertion, is just one way that you can do that. So there are two types of RPE mainly. So the original one was this six to 20 scale, which seems like a weird scale, I'll explain it. And it was associated with your heart rate. The other option, and this is more commonly used, is basically a zero to 10. I think of it like a percentage of your max effort. This is easier to use for most people. But let's explore both of them. So the original scale, or well, the original Borg, rating of perceived exertion scale was a scale of six to 20, and it was supposed to co correspond with your heart rate. So a no effort at rest, um, a heart rate might be around 60 beats per minute for most people, 60 to 70 or so. Um, even lower if you're very healthy, but this is no effort. You're not doing any, any activity. Um, if you're getting all the way up to 20. So you see here that we've got six to 20. And if you add a zero, then you get your corresponding heart rate. Okay. So a rating of a six would be 60 beats per minute. Um, a 14 would be 140 beats per minute and so on. So this was especially useful for um, cardio, like endurance activity. So this, this would be an easy way for you to just estimate, like if you have an Apple watch and it measures your heart rate and you're a bicyclist or a long distance runner or something like that, and you can easily track your um, heart rate, then this scale would be useful for you. So the idea here um, is, uh, is simply to measure your heart rate. I don't like this scale because people don't tend to get this and people don't s tend to have a good estimation of their actual heart rate. So I find that just using the one through or the zero through 10 uh, scale is easier. And by the way, I want to point out that I do have this 200 beats per minute that would be way, way, way too high for most people. Most people are, are going to be um, <laughs> not exercising at their actual maximum heart rate. So uh, they're going to be at a percentage of it, like 70% of their max heart rate, for example. So anyway, then we came out, then Borg came out with the Borg CR10 um, scale, which is a much, much simpler scale. And this is what most people are talking about when they say RPE, they are using a, a zero through 
through 10 scale. And all I like to think of it like a percentage, but essentially, you know, a zero is no effort, a 10 is maximum effort. Okay, so whatever activity you can use this for endurance exercise, you know, cardio exercise, you can use it for yoga. If you're holding poses, how difficult was that pose? Were you using 50% of your effort or was that maximum effort? You couldn't have held the pose for another second. And so anything in between. We want to use these scales in such a way that we are making sure we're exercising intense enough to get adaptation, but not so intense that we're putting ourselves at risk. So how intense is intense enough? Well, generally speaking, for most people, if you're just trying to get a, a hold of how to use these, I would recommend going with most of your activity at least get up to that seven RPE. So use about 70% of your effort when you're really working out. So you can use less at times and you can use a little bit more at times, but aim for around that 70% effort. So that's going to be the point of activity where you're feeling like, okay, I am working. I am really fatiguing. I might even be sore tomorrow, but I don't feel like I'm pushing so hard that my muscles are going to give out on me. I don't feel like I'm putting myself at risk because I'm exercising so intensely. I feel like I'm in control, but I'm pushing it. That's that RPE of seven. That's how I like to think of it. And this is a good place for you to aim. So how, let's get a little bit specific. How do you actually rate it? So is it in a, each moment or based on if you're lifting weights, um, based on the uh, weight that you're lifting or reps or something? Well, there's lots of ways that you could use this. This is a tool for you, okay? So you could say, well, what is the amount of weight that I can pick up during this activity? And um, let's say I'm trying to do 10 repetitions of a weight um, uh, of an exercise, a bicep curl. Then if I want to do 10 repetitions at 70% of my maximum effort, an effort that I feel like I'm really working, but it's not like I'm going to die here or my muscles are going to give out. Maybe that for me is picking up um, a 30 pound weight. Okay, so 30 pounds, I could do it 10 times and feel like that's about 70% of my maximum effort. Okay, now you could apply this to yoga. So pose variation. Well, you might say, well, maybe if I wanted to do five chaturangas, well, if I did five, like, you know, proper chaturangas, maybe that's my maximum effort. Okay, but, but maybe if I put my knees down, Maybe that's 70% of my maximum effort. So you think about, well, how can I modify the pose in such a way that I'm uh, allowing for that little bit of room, right? So in yoga, sometimes some poses, we can't even hold for a second, and that is our maximum effort. And we really don't want to be exercising at our maximum effort often or at all. There's not really a lot of benefit to it. So usually we wanna back off a little bit and do something that we can really nail it. But, you know, it's pushing it. It's pushing our comfort zone, okay? So if you cannot do a single chatter, or you can only do one chaturanga, but you cannot do two chaturangas in a row, then consider in the future in your yoga classes, Put your knees down because I bet with a knees down chaturanga, you could probably do a few comfortably. And for you, that's an RPE of seven. That's 70% of your max effort. And eventually your version of an RPE of seven is going to be a pro, you know, a knees up chaturanga, right? A full depth chaturanga. But for now, maybe it's knees down and half depth, right? Or we could say momentary, you know, in a moment of effort, am I using, um, if I'm holding a pose, is this pose 70% of my effort? Or we could say overall, the whole workout, over 30 minutes of exercise, would, did I feel like I used about, like burned about 70% of my energy? Or by the end of the workout, all the activity combined, did I feel like that was maximum effort? You really should not be doing maximum effort very often, if you do it at all, okay? 
So uh, you could do that, you, individual exercise, you could do it based on a set number of reps, right, of a weightlifting activity. So maybe five reps, you could base it on that, or you could base it on 10 reps. So I could say, do 10 reps at an RPE of seven. I could also say do five reps at an RPE of seven, and that would be a heavier weight because you could pick up a heavier weight fewer times. Um, and as I discussed, we can also use it in yoga for the duration of a hold. So how long can you hold warrior two? Maybe you can hold it for a minute. And at the end of a minute, your muscles are gonna give out. Well, that would be an RPE of 10. And in that case, I would recommend that you either take a different variation of Warrior Two, so it's a little easier, so you have a little room to breathe, or don't hold it for a full minute, hold it for 40 seconds, and that's maybe an RPE of seven, okay? So again, we're, I'm just using the zero through 10 scale. So again, reminder here, the importance is that we need to push ourselves, if we wanna get stronger, hard enough to force our body to adapt, but not so hard that we're putting ourselves at risk. So that is what RPE is, and that is how you use it. Uh, next week, I will be discussing um, reps in reserve, which is an alternative to RPE, and it can be used in a similar way. If you like this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.